Hi guys, in today's video, I wanted to show you a super clean and simple way to add tooltips to icon lists in Elementor. And a good example for why you'd want to use this is what you can see on the screen here. Um, basically free packages where you can use icon lists here to say what the package would include. And if you wanted to add more information to what each element means, a tooltip would be a good way of doing this. Someone who does do this is Hostinger. So this is the some website builder packages. And you can see here on each element where we've got a tooltip, we've got a dotted or a dashed line, and then you can hover over that element, that particular line, and it will give you more information. And I've sort of stolen this design idea for my website. This is my maintenance packages. And once you hover over certain elements, or certain lines, you'll get more information on what that actually means. So how do we do this then? If we go into Elementor, you can see I've already set up three packages. So basic designs, I've just gone for three containers. And in each container, I've got a heading, a couple of headings, text editor, the icon list. So this is the important one, and then a button. And then these are all housed within the parent container, which is the main packages container. And basically how this works is it's essentially just a span element instead of in your icon list, just write in the text. You need to put a span element in here, which will contain both the tooltip text and the actual text itself that when you hover, it will, the tooltip will appear. So what I'll do is I'll show you how you need to format this text in order to get it to work. So I've got the text in here. So this is some filler icon list items, just lower my Ipsum text. And this is a format it needs to follow in order to work. So you need to put the text within a span element here. And the text you actually want to be visible without hovering, the tooltip trigger is seen highlighted in green here. So this text will just be what's visible now. So placeholder headline, sample icon, block text. And then it's the text here highlighted in blue, which is the tooltip content. So this will obviously vary alongside the tooltip trigger. Everything else will remain the same per uh, line item. So you've got here the span. It needs to contain a class of tooltip. So I'll, I'll show you the code that we're going to add for the tooltip class, which will basically mean you can style up your tooltip however you want. Then we want data tooltip, which will equal your content. We want a tab index of zero in here. And what this does is it, it makes the tooltips keyboard accessible so that users who need to use a keyboard can tab through each tooltip and it will appear on the screen as if they're hovering on the tooltip with the mouse. So this is some list items that I can now just copy in, simply copy and paste. So you'll see here, you can only see placeholder label. And then I'll go back to here. Let's copy this one. So this one sample icon text, we should just see that. Copy that one in. Uh, you know what, I'll stick one on this side as well. So we'll add like this one over here. So we'll place that one down here, sample content block, paste that one in. We'll add one at the end of the power package as well. So we'll go to content, placeholder headline, and we'll add in, we'll add this one here, dummy heading. So we'll paste that one in just so you can see how it it's visible over the button and the edge of the container. So we'll paste that one in. So at the moment, I'll publish that. You can't see anything because we haven't added our code, our CSS to make this work. So I'll go back to my document. So this is the CSS to make it work. So we've got three elements here. We've got the tooltip itself. We've got tooltip before, and then we've got the tooltip hover and focus. And as I say, the focus is important for to make this keyboard accessible. So the tooltip itself is 
basically what you can see before you hover. So this is showing the underline, making it dotted, the thickness of the underline and the offset. So these, these elements here are just personal preference. You can choose what you'd like your underline to look like. It's the top two here, which are the important ones. Next, we've got the actual tooltip itself. So it's work, it works by using a pseudo element, the before pseudo element, and then the content of the tooltip is defined as the data tooltip tool tip attribute, which it, here you can see is highlighted in blue. So this is important. Pointer events none, also important if you don't want to be able to interact with the tooltip itself. And then position absolute display by default is none. And then the rest of them are just, again, personal style and preferences that you can change. And then very important down here at the bottom, we've got hover and focus. We want to display block so your tooltips are visible. So if I copy these, and you'll notice I've got selector in front of them all. And that's so we can place this in the parent element packages. Because what this will do is it'll look at all the descendants or all the children until it finds the tooltip element. I don't know why it's added spaces in there, but we don't need them. But what this is doing now is it's it's looking through its children until it finds the tooltip class and then it's applying all these styling elements to each tooltip class. Otherwise, if you don't put it in the packages parent, you'd have to put it in each one of these or each one of the icon lists. And then you just get code repetition, which isn't advised. So yeah, just stick it in the parent element. We'll publish this. You'll see straight away on the editing page, the it's visible basically. So now we'll preview the changes and there you go, visible. And then just to make sure it works with focus focus in when you're using a mouse is actually click so that's a good way of making it remain open but on hover if you just come off it it'll disappear and then if we use tab you can see that you can tab through these now and they'll also be visible so yeah that's just a lightweight version or a lightweight way of showing tool tips for icon lists and a good a good method to build packages out so I hope that's helped and I'll see you in the next video.